Hello, and welcome to this how-to about making and using Jamboards. If you wish to make a Jamboard, your first step would be to go to these three dots down here. At the top, you can see it says whiteboard, open a jam. If I click this, it asks me whether I wish to start a new whiteboard or choose one from Drive. We'll look at this option later on, but for now, let's start a new whiteboard. As you can see, the whiteboard has opened and it has been given a generic title. Let's rename that title as Jamboard Test. Now, if I check in my Google Drive, at the very bottom, I can see Jamboard Test has been created. Let's return to the Jamboard. The Jamboard is effectively a whiteboard. It can be a collaborative space for you and your learners or your colleagues to work together. For you to make sure that everybody can work on the Jamboard, you need to change the sharing privileges. I click share. I am now told that I am the owner and that people with a Manchester Adult Education Service email can you view this. They can't edit it. If I change this, I could change it so any Manchester Adult Education Service user could be an editor, or I could change it that anyone with the link may be an editor. This will depend on how you wish to use your Jamboard. You could have it that nobody but yourself is the editor. There are various tools down the side, such as the pen, the eraser, the selector, which allows you to pick up and move items, uh, sticky notes, you can add images, create auto shapes of which there are a variety. You can create text boxes and you can use a laser pointer, which is visible to anybody else who's viewing the Jamboard. The laser pointer simply is a red dot for you to indicate to others what sections you're referring to. Up at the top, you have a list of the individual frames that you're looking at, and you can move forward by using the arrow. Every time I move forward, I'm creating a new frame. If I wish to see the frames I already have, I can click down and I can see I now have three blank frames. Let's go to frame number one. I'm going to add a sticky note. You can see the sticky note has appeared here. I can change the size. I can move it around. I can also change the color. I return up to the top. I can duplicate this slide as many times as I want. So if I create an activity on one slide, I can mirror that activity multiple times. If we go to slide number four, you can see it is blank. I could, if I wanted to, add images for other people to view. It, this includes things like screenshots. Here is a picture of my drive. If I take a screenshot, I can post that image by pasting it in here. And now you can see there is an image that anyone who had access to this Jamboard would be able to view. Again, I can resize it, I can duplicate it or delete it. If we look at our frames, you can see which one has got 
the image. Jump boards are very powerful, but starting with a blank board isn't always the most useful. Sometimes you may want to pre-populate a Jamboard before a session. In that case, you'll want to start by creating a Jamboard in your Google Drive. Here I am on my Google Drive. If I wish to create a Jamboard, I can go over to New. Click on New. Go down to More. Go across and down to Google Jamboard. Click in Create. Here, it has been entitled Untitled Jam. Let's rename this as Jamboard Test 2. I'm going to go back to the meeting. Here, if you remember, we had the option of starting a new whiteboard or choosing one from the drive. If I select Choose from Drive, it shows me the Jamboards I've created recently. And there we can see Jamboard Test 2. And now I've opened that Jamboard. If there are people in the meeting with you, a link to the Jamboard will be shared in the chat. I hope you found this video useful. And for more information on how to use Jamboards, how you could use them in your lessons, and what you could do with them with your learners. Feel free to come along to one of our digital drop-in sessions. Thank you very much.